What's good, y'all? SGG family, baby. We are back with another Reds rebuild. Now, last time out, we finished a very hot month of June, and we're looking to keep that going as we continue through the rest of July. Man, we're starting off with a two-game winning streak already. And in today's episode, we'll be getting close to that all-star break, man. But if you guys are enjoying, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below. Any things that you think I could do to make the series a little bit better, any moves that you think we should be making as we're coming up on that trade deadline. Now, as you can see, obviously, all-star game for the MLB is coming up in about two weeks. But we also got the AA, AAA all-star game, the Futures game. All of those are going to be very, very important uh, for our players to be able to see, you know, who possibly needs to come up and who don't. Now, looking at the MLB All-Star Bowl, remember last year, we didn't have that many people. Tyler Stevenson got snubbed. We had Lucas Sims coming in off the bench, basically, as our only All-Star that made it. Uh, so this year, hopefully, a couple more people can make it in. You see Lucas Sims is high up in votes again, but as well as Kirby Yates, who zero ERA through, I think it was like 20 or 30 innings pitched, uh, 15 innings pitched, actually. But still, that's very impressive to not even give up an earned run yet. Tyler Stevenson, this time, is first in catcher voting. So hopefully this time they won't snub him out. Last time he was second and they didn't let him go, but they chose the person that was in fourth place to go into it. Uh, Jonathan India is second and or fourth and second place votes as well. Mike Moustakis is down the list a little bit as well. It used to be easier to tell who was getting in. You know, Normally the top two were going, and then maybe the third, depending on the type of year. Uh, but the fact that we've got a lot of people close, including Doug Granger, the rookie, Close to making the All Star game is pretty impressive. And here, look, that boy Tommy Fram used to be on the Cincinnati Reds last season. Didn't do much for us this year. He's not too bad though. About ten home runs, batting two seventy five. Wouldn't have been that bad coming off the bench, but not bad the fact that we let him go though. That boy wasn't doing anything for us. So today we'll look to get close to that All Star break so we can see and kind of confirm how many All Stars we'll actually have this year. Let me know down below your predictions. How many All Stars will the Cincinnati Reds have in this in this world? Not in real life at this all-star game so today we are getting into a full game though against st louis uh number one team in our division right now and this is vladimir gutierrez's first start of the season see a quick look at his stats there four and four record of 471 ERA. he's done a lot of work to get that low as our long reliever and i thought it was time to go ahead and bring him into the starting rotation and replace of our struggling supposed to be at least in luis castillo i thought he's going to be the ace and he's turned out to be demoted all the way down to long reliever until he can fix that ERA and show he deserves to be back in this rotation. So today we'll be looking at Gutierrez's first start of the season. Not first ever start. And not even first start of the series. But first start of the season. So we can see if he's going to produce a quality outing. Now starting things off already with a grounded over the third base. And we'll look to improve it against Mondo with the four seam heat going right past him. And that's two quick outs. Paul Goldsmith up 2-0 count. Flies this one out to left field. Joey Gallo is going back on the run. It'll be up against the warning track, and he'll get it in nice and smooth-like. It'll be a two-out double there for St. Louis. And now let's see how well he works his way out of this. Tyler O'Neill works a walk here. So we've got first and second now with Nolan Arenado. Not a good situation to be in, but 0-2. He gets him to pop this one right to Jesus Aguilar to end the first inning. And we'll have the duty and task of having to tax that man Jack Flaherty, a 2-4-2 two, two ERA, 17 starts, 6-7 and seven record. I think he is their ace. I'm uh, not exactly sure what their pitching rotation looks like, but those are kind of ace numbers now. 2-4-2 two, two ERA, I'll take that. I need that on my team. And the first batter he faces, he's showing exactly why that ERA is so low. Pop out over to first base. And Jonathan India is retired. Got a full count here to Donovan Solano as well. We're really working the counts here. 13 pitches through two batters. This knuckle curve is taken to shallow left field. It'll be out number two. Next up, we got one of the best three hitters in the league, at least in my opinion, Cesar Hernandez. That ain't now 265. At one point, he was over 300, but has cooled off as the season has gone on. And that'll be a ground out as well to end our part of the third inning, first inning as well. Back to Vladimir Gutierrez. First batter he faces will be a long fly ball. Gallo going back at the wall. Warning track hits up against it, but he's able to catch it, glove it, and get it in for out number one. Today is going to be mostly about Gutierrez and how strong of a pitcher he is here today. A lot of outs, weekly hit. You know, a couple that were pretty hard. Um, but for the most part, he was hitting his spots. He was hitting the black, getting the calls. One, two here. Swings and misses at the circle. Change, getting them to look silly. And we'll take things back to our offense. Now we got two outs. Jesus Aguilar up. Still no runs out. You see 10 seasons, 135 home runs. 
Oh shoot. Let's add another one to it if we can. That's a four seamer right down the middle going back to right field at the warning track. That is good. Jesus Aguilar with the solo shot. And he gives the Reds the one to nothing lead. You see we're in the black sleeve unis today. I thought it looked pretty clean. You know, spacing against the Cardinals in the home series. Why not bring out some new unis? He's able to knock that one out and give us an early lead here. Exactly what we want and need, especially against Jack Flaherty. And with an unproven starter on the board. Now let's keep things going with rookie Doug Granger. Ran 259 on the season. Not too bad. 0-1 count. Hits the knuckle ball. Fouls it off. We got 25 pitches on Jake already. And swings and misses at the upstairs. Heat trying to get him a little piece of that home run action but not able to be successful. And something pretty amazing happened here next as you see a strikeout there by Vladimir Gutierrez. We pretty much follow the same formula for the next three innings here with Gutierrez. Strikeout, strikeout, and then some other formula. As you see Edmondo here, pops this one right over to shortstop. And so far that's three solid innings of work. We come back into the top of the fourth here. No house, Paul Goldsmith is up and he fouls his four seamer off. He's not going for that heat right now. Swings and misses at the circle change of things, taking him a little bit off speed. And then on 0-2, gets that circle change to freeze him. Strikeout number one there, Tyler O'Neill. Swings and misses at strikeout number two at the end. And can we get the three-piece this time? Nolan Arenado, 1-2. Flies this one out to Nick Senzel. So that's two back-to-back -back innings, two strikeouts, two other kind of, or one other kind of out. We go ahead and move things up to the top of the fifth inning here. We got a 3-1 count to Trevor Story. Their newly acquired pick. And he goes and looks at a call strike. Full count here now. Swings and misses through the circle change. I was worried about him. Went and traded for him, but so far nothing to worry about. And then Harrison takes a call circle change there on the lower black. That's three in the straight. Two strikeouts. Can we get the third strikeout this time though? Dylan Carlson chops this one right over Cesar Hernandez. He'll come in, glove it, throw to first. Base is on target. And that'll be three innings. Well, really five innings of shutout pitching now. We're going to the top of the six. 0-1 count to Kurt. He flies this one deep. Left field going back at the warning track. We'll go ahead and kick this up off the wall. 13 speed is not enough to go ahead and get a double off of, but that is their first base runner since the first inning. So we'll see if they're able to make something out of it as we go ahead and get the first out. Gutierrez trying to look to show that he can hold the door here no matter who's on base. 0-2. Pops this one out into the outfield. Sinzel is coming in. Gonna get to it. It'll hit off his forearm. He was not able to glove that somehow. Came all the way in and just, I guess, lost it in the in the lights of the stadium. Lost it in the sunlight. Lost focus for a second. I don't know whatever you want to call it. But this one hits off his forearm, and they're able to get basically first and second here. Wasn't even able to recover in time to get the runner at second base. So now we got first and second, one out. Paul Grossman is up, and this one is a ground over to India. He won't be able to glove it cleanly or pick it up in time to throw it to first. So now we've got bases loaded, one out, thanks to two, at least in my book, two errors. I think they awarded that first one with a base hit. So now we got Tyler O'Neill, who has been very patient here today, and he works another full count. 77 pitches in. Gutierrez might be a little tired. Swings and misses through the four-seamer Lodo, still getting the strikeouts. And now any kind of out will work to get us out of this inning unscathed. 1-2 to Nolan Arenado, and he makes him pop this out to shallow left field. Six innings, shutout ball, and got out of a bases loaded one-out situation. I think he's earned his way into that rotation. Now, I don't know if I'll keep him at the three spot or five or where he'll be at. But as of right now, he'll be the three spot in the rotation. Uh, just to take right over where Luis Castillo was. Did a good job here against St. Louis. And now let's get back to this offense. Did you think that I would let y'all miss this home run? Two run shot from Jonathan India, man, as the big red machine takes a three to nothing lead. We were able to get the runner at first, and then India hits his seventh bomb of the season out there to deep left field. A no doubt home run. And you already know we're about to take this lead. And now St. Louis will go ahead and take out their starter, Jack Flaherty, there after that three-run home run. Not a bad day pitching, honestly, for him. I mean, three earned runs through uh, six innings of work here. So, I mean, you can't really be mad at it. You wish the offense had done a little bit more for him. 
but just wasn't too sharp here today. Gave him two big time home runs, and we were able to take advantage. They'll bring in Alex Reyes, a 4.57 ERA, though, through 41 in the third, only eight holds and a 1 4 record. We're looking to see if maybe we can still tax him, too. Uh, you know, you're going to bring in a, a reliever that's not exactly the greatest. We're going to look to try to put up some more runs here. Uh, unfortunately, Donovan Solano did not get the memo. He was in the on deck circle when we were talking about that. So he pops out over to third base to get the first out of the bottom of the sixth here. Cesar Hernandez will come up next, and he will chop this one right over to second base. He'll go barehanded and go over to first base. What a play by the second baseman there. Mike Moustakis up next, and he will work a walk to finally get on base. And we got Joey Gallo. Last episode was a pretty big one for him. He's been hitting a lot of home runs lately, but he swings through the slider low. Oh, it could have been a bomb if he had connected with it. But we'll go ahead and get out of this with a 3-0 lead, and we'll go back to the Vladimir Gutierrez show as we get Hunter Trevor Story swinging and missing there once again. Now we got 0-2 to Harrison. One out, swings and misses through the circle change, and we back to the two strikeout. Another out formula. 1-1 to Dylan. He chops this one right over to Hernandez. He'll glove it, come in, throwing. Got him. That's seven strong innings of work for Vladimir Gutierrez. I couldn't be more proud of him coming in in a spot start and putting in a work like that against the number one team in the division right now. And we got Brent Sutter coming in next. Pretty good reliever with that 208 ERA. So he's going to look to try to hold us in check and not give up any more runs here in this ball game than already has been. As he goes in and gets the first out of the inning there. Doug Granger up next. 0 for on the day. Chops this one just as well. This is popped right over to first base and keeping him busy here today. We've seen a lot of pop-ups go to first, especially from the Cincinnati batting order. But that's Tyler Stevenson deep back into left field, right to where the left fielder was standing, though, unfortunately. As we go in and take a 3 nothing lead still into the top of the eighth inning. Now, Gutierrez is still out there, 94 pitches deep. We're looking to see just how much can you give us. Can you give us a complete game shutout against St. Louis? Now, he's already five outs away from that with that little fly up to shallow center field. First pitch that Edmondson sees here. This will be grinded over to India. He'll round it off, kid it, throw the first, not in time. That'll be a base hit. Now, Mondo is up next, 0-1 count. He drops this one over to Cesar Hernandez. He's not able to get it. Gallo picks it up. We got runners at first and second, one out now. And Gutierrez, he needs that strong day. We'll go ahead and get him out, bring in the reliable Kirby Yates. 15 innings of work, still hasn't given up an earned run. 20 strikeouts in that same amount of time. Not really allowing lefties to hit off him. So we bring him in as one of our surest setup men. As Luis Caesar has been kind of struggling. And the first thing he does is get the first batter he faces to fly out to left field. Easy work there. Now any out will do for us to go ahead and keep this lead. Tyler O'Neill is up next. And it looks like on a full count here after he takes that top pitch. Still being very patient today. That's something I got to credit him on. Tyler O'Neill was very patient today, worked every single at-bat that he was in, earned a couple of walks, and this one earns him a base hit into the outfield. Granger's coming in, firing. India will get it. He'll just throw the second base and get Tyler O'Neill trying to move up. So they only get one run there. The second run didn't come across. But now the score is 3-1, to one, so we got to hope that we can hold this off. Maybe let's see if we can go and get some insurance runs. Strikeout's not a good way to start in India. I think that's about like the second time. Other than the home run he hit, I think all his hits have been pop outs to first base. As that'll be out number two, as Donovan Solano with a two-out rally, possibly no. This will be right out to center field and gloved. So we'll take this to the top of the ninth. We gotta go ahead and bring in our all-star closer to try to knock this out. Five, six, seven, all coming up, all offers. And I'll have to face Lucas Sims. 18 saves, 19 opportunities, an 0-2 record with a two ERA, but 39 strikeouts has me feeling pretty strong through 26 games. So Hoping this game is in hands. No Leonardo. Swings and misses at the circle change. Low and away. That's out number one. Trevor Story 0-2. Swings and misses at the high upstairs heat. That is two outs. He just needs one more. Can he get a strikeout here at the last batter? Harrison chops this one right over to Caesar. Not the best angle on it. And 91 speed is enough to beat that out. That is a base hit over at first. So not too worried there, though. Still two outs. Dylan Carlson's up next. 1-2. Looks at the four seamer at the ankles. Gets one right down Main Street, and he takes it to the bullpen, basically, as that is a two-run home run to not only ruin Vladimir Gutierrez's start, but also puts us in a bind. As we finally get the last strikeout to go in and get things put up, but we are not able to close this out. So they'll bring in Giovanni Galagos to go ahead and finish off this night, but we'll look to see if we can walk it off. 
Starting off with Cesar Hernandez. 3-1 count lines this one right to shortstop. He's able to get a glove on it. Not able to get a base hit there. We got Mike Moustakis up next, and he swings and misses at the 0-2 heat. Next is Joey Gallo. Can he work a walk and do a two-out rally here? Ball right down the middle. That's a good time to hit right there, and it will get into the outside part of the field. Beats the shift while hitting into the shift. And now this game comes down to Hazel's Aguilar. Two outs, 3-0 count. He'll walk. Now we've got the winning run at second. Doug Granger, the rookie, up 1-2 and takes the four-seamer on the outside. The one thing you never want to have happen is in the inning, especially in the inning, when you could have walked it off by watching strike three. Now next up, Lucas Sims will kind of come in just to keep things going. You know, why not keep him out there? Why tire out my bullpen when this is his fault in the first place? So we'll look to see if he can go and get things shaken up. Here's that ball is thrown away. The runner looks like he's just going to chill out. Not advanced, though. So one out, runner at third base, and they get the strike out there. That is clutch. Now we just need one out. We can go try to win this. No, we can't because Paul Goldschmidt will hit the yellow post and give them the home run that gives them the lead. Look at this lined rope right up there. He knew it. The pitcher knew it. The catcher knew it. The whole stadium knew it. And that strikeout doesn't even matter anymore because we got to pick up two of our own in the bottom of the tent. Now we have that extra inning runner at second base. Tyler Stevenson just a little bit late on the circle change right to center field. Not deep enough to really move up as he tested it out. But that throw was online. Next, we got Nick Senzel. First pitch he sees is a cutter right down the middle. Good timing on his deep to center field. He's ranging back and he'll glove it. Chest in the warning track range, but the runner will be at third base. So two outs, we need a home run or it's home run or go home. Basically, Jonathan India has already hit a two run home run to kind of put us in a good position. And the three one count will come in as he takes the sinker right over the middle. Tanks another sinker inside. Three, two count. That's that slider right down Main Street. But it's also right to the center field and this ball game will end. As St. Louis comes back and stuns Cincinnati late in the ninth inning and in extras to win this 5-3 to three in 10 innings. Unfortunately, it just ruins a perfect start, honestly, for Gutierrez. 7 to third, 5 hits. He has one on run. 11 strikeouts. Like, y'all see that 11 strikeouts to one walk? He has one on run because of Kirby Yates, so I'm not even... I wish that didn't count towards him, but there's a different ERA tracker that, like, was specifically just their runs, not, like, what a reliever came in and gave up. Uh, but, unfortunately, I don't think that's an advanced metric. Y'all let me know. If that's an advanced metric, leave it down below so I can go ahead and look into that. If that's something I can look on every show, I definitely want to. Now, we wanted to get into a playoff game here against Tyler with Tyler Stevenson being our only leader in an all-star voting, but, unfortunately, he... Had an 0 for 4 day, you know, didn't, didn't really do much here. But unfortunately, but the great news is we were still able to come away with a victory here to bounce back after that St. Louis loss, man. We're able to go ahead and get a 4 2 win here. And with Hernandez hit home run number seven on the season, which is always good to see. And the other Hernandez came in pitching six innings, two earned runs, three strikeouts. So we would love more of those, but obviously, nothing much you can do there. And here we get a trade offer here for uh, shortstop Kyron Paris, who's B potential 21 overall. Or 65 overall, 21 years old. And I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, hold on now. This is a pretty good shortstop prospect for the future. You know, he's playing decently down here at double A. We know we're not going to keep Michael Stockis long term because he needs 34. Who knows when he'll retire? Who knows how much money he's going to be asking for? I'm not giving over 15 million to somebody that's almost 36. <laughs> he's 36. Like, I'm not doing that, bro. So I was looking at my shortstop. I mean, we got Brad Parks at a potential, like, and then Josh Gomez as well. I want to give them chances to come to the show. So you guys let me know down below. I'll wait to record the next part, but y'all got to let me know down below. Do I come back? Right now I'm declining it, but do I come back and make this exact trade for Kyron Paris? Do you think it's worth it? Or what other move for Mike Moustakis do you guys think would be a better move? Now, here you can see we're going up against the Royals next. We get a victory here, 3-1, to one, not too bad. Doug Granger actually knocked two home runs out of the park here today, two solo shots, which were key for us getting the victory. And Gutierrez, once again, getting another victory and another start. Five innings, one earned run, five strikeouts. The ERA is dipping a little bit. I was just kind of tough with his innings that he's pitching, but it's dipping a little bit. Now, here the White Sox try to trade us for Jesus Aguilar, who I didn't really have on the trade block, but I was interested in seeing what they wanted to give up. 
uh, some young pitching prospects, not really high potential. So I was like, no, I'll keep Jesus Aguilar. I've drafted some people to fill that role. You see here against the Padres, 10 to 7 victory. Uh, obviously, Lodato wasn't the one to get it. Not a very good start for him. But the fact that we put up 10 earned runs here, and then we come back the next day and put up seven more with Ranger hitting even more home runs. I thought it was pretty impressive for a team that probably could be winning the World Series, at least in the running for it. And then here, I'm going to go into the last game after a three-game winning streak. Uh, but actually, it's time for the Futures game. I forgot the Futures game is on the day before our All-Star games go. So I go to look and see, do we have anybody specifically that will be playing in this game? Because uh, I didn't know. Last year, we did have Hunter Green and uh, one other person playing in it. But this year, we actually got second baseman Tyler Callahan. Batting 289, 13 almost 45 RBIs this season, not doing too bad. And that sparked me to go look at the all-star voting for the minor leagues as well. You see Matt Pittich, Pittich, Pittacher, something like that. <laughs> he's in there uh, as for a reliever because he's done really good. You see Albert Pujols is down here at the AAA level. Uh, in real life, he's actually killing it. I think he's close to what he just hit home run around 694 in real life. At the time, I'll be doing this voiceover, so that's pretty dope. Uh, but I wasn't seeing too many of our guys up there in that one, two, or three spot. We do have some people at the you know three or four positions at some key positions. And a lot of people are that should probably honestly be at the major league level that were last season. Um, we can go to double A. You know, I saw Brad Parks that did look like he was leading his way uh, for the uh, shortstops. So that he could be in the all-star game. Got Chucky Robinson closed. Johnny Tucker in his first ever time playing at you know professional level. He's second in voting. Tom Callahan, of course, is leading. Uh, Christian Santana's up there. Brad Parks is up there. TJ Fredel, 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 Fredel. <laughs> Boy, I need to start learning how to say my player's name. But he's up there too as well. So it should be a fun all-star festivities. Let me know if you guys are ready for that in the next upcoming episodes. We'll definitely get into that one for sure. Um, we'll get into every all-star. So next episode will be completely all-star weekend. Everything all-star, all the all-star games. Either player locking or playing them in full. Uh, we'll probably play... It depends on, how, obviously, how many All-Stars we have, whether we play in there for or player lock. Uh, but we'll be getting through all four of the All-Star games, AA, AAA, Major League level, and the Futures game, and the Home Run Derby. I don't think we have anybody in it, though, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and you know simulate it. We see who wins it, um, like kind of like we did last year. Let me know how you guys feel about that formula. And we'll go ahead and get into that in the next episode, man. So if you guys are enjoying, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave feedback down below. I really want to read through that and get intertwined with you guys and see what you guys are thinking and enjoying for this series and see if I'm making smart moves to you guys. I feel like they're smart moves to me. I feel like it's going to lead us to greatness soon, but y'all let me know what you guys think. That record's getting a little bit better, 43 and 54, getting closer to 500. Only eight and a half games back behind the Cubs. We're getting closer to that division lead, possibly. Not as far spread this year, so let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's me, boy, SGG, the king of games, and GM Smooth is out.